Welcome back to the Kapower Hour. I'm Lauren Powell. And I'm Sean Casey. And we are seriously freaking pregnant. <laughs> we didn't even get to the Kapows. We're kapregnant. Like, so pregnant. Everything hurts. You were like, oh, do you want to drink some water? Like, get your energy up right before we shot. We started doing this podcast. And I was like, that's not going to help. I'm just in, like, constant pregnancy pain that it is just affecting my energy so i'm gonna do the best i can okay to bring it i'll i'll, I'll bring it too well chug your whiskey it's already been brocked brocked isn't that from step up or uh no wrong What's, what, eh. what movie is that from <laughs> it's already been brought in is it brought in yeah because it was the not another teen movie they're making fun yeah. of bring it on yeah i thought they said bring it brocked or something like that brought brought in it's a, mm. it's a fake word. I know. I I I was trying to use another fake word that I thought that's what it was. Okay. Well, you were close. Kapow. We're the Kapows. We're the Kapows. If you're new here, we're the Kapows because my last name is Powell, his last name is Casey, and it was our wedding hashtag. And Kapow it's is our fun. is our joint married name. It's gonna be our tattoo soon. No. As soon as we have the baby. No, absolutely not. Yep. Kapow. Right in our butts. Uh, speaking of baby. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say speaking of butts. <laughs> No. Oh, okay. Moving Speaking on. of baby, it, let's give them another baby name clue. So the two clues we've already given you guys are it's Irish and it's not hard to pronounce. <laughs> My friend Darren and his wife Sarah, um, who we actually crashed their wedding in Ireland. Sarah is Irish. They guessed Siobhan and Sersha. Which are the two most common guesses that everyone is. Now I'm like, should we just, should we scratch whatever name we had <laughs> come up just with? Just do that, yeah. And I feel like we should. It's just by popular demand. Yeah. So the clue this week is it's alliteration, which you should have figured out based on all the other naming g- games that we've kind of done. The Cold ones, Casey. The ones Cutter that, Casey. Yeah, the ones that we're really resonating with. Yeah. So we feel very strongly about alliteration. Yep. And that's the clue. <laughs> all right. So far, no one has gotten it really? ri- right. Okay. I have not seen anyone guess it correctly. Okay. Yeah. Anyone close? No. No. Okay. No. What's the prize if someone guesses it? Uh, I don't know. They can have the middle name. <laughs> How about that? Wow. You're going to give up the middle name? I don't know. Oh. No. Don't quote me on that. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Speaking of baby names, did you hear this story in the news this week? This woman in Australia, not to make our podcast all about Australia yet again, uh, this woman in Australia na- legally named her son Methamphetamine Rules. What? Did you hear about this? No. Okay. So it's sound it gets crazy. It's not just like it's like who would do that, right? Right. It's it's more wild than that. Basically she's a like an ABC journalist. And uh So she's her, not a meth head. No. It <laughs> doesn't actually come from her love of meth? Uh, no, not at all. So oh. her name is Kirsten Drysdale. She named her son Methamphetamine Rules, completely expecting it to get rejected. She was basically doing this research story, basically working on a story that aims to investigate the answers to viewers' burning questions, <laughs> one of which is, what can I legally name my baby? And I don't know if it's like this in the U.S., but in, I guess, in Australia, they have this thing called the NSW Registry of Births, Deaths, and Marriages. That organization is responsible for allowing names, approving names, or not approving names. I have no idea what it's like in the U.S. So I don't know if that's on what, like, already, like, it's crazy that they have to get names yeah. approved by this government organization, or if that's pretty standard in the U.S. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, okay. like, I know you, you can't get stuff on your license plate. Is that the same? Maybe. Same okay. Rules? So she was trying to figure out, let's say you register a name after you give birth, you put a name down and you register it uh, and it gets denied. The baby needs a name. The baby needs a temporary name. So she was trying to investigate and figure out what happens. What's the default name that the registrar gives the child when something's rejected. So that backfired. What? Yeah. So basically <laughs> she couldn't get any straightforward answer from this organization and so as she was about to give birth she decided like let's just try it what's the weirdest craziest thing (laughs) because she was really just trying to find out what's the default name they give the baby she was not trying to find out if she could slip a name in (laughs) 
She just wanted, she was like, methamphetamine rules we thought would surely get rejected. And then when it does, we can find out what the name, what name the registrar chooses. It was really just a lighthearted, curious attempt to get an answer to this question. Her wow. official birth certificate arrived in the mail with methamphetamine rules listed as her son's given name. First wow. name, meth. <laughs> Uh, the registry has since strengthened its processes in response to this highly unusual uh, event. So then they did they disapprove it like later? She has a new name. She's not telling anyone, oh. but she it's it's been sorted. Um, but yeah, they were like, this is rare. That should not have been approved. That's wild. Yeah. Also interesting in Australia and maybe here, I don't know. These are the names, types of names that are not allowed that will not get approved. So it's like swear words, sex acts, slurs, and official titles. So you can't name your baby doctor, mm. queen, king, or prime minister. Oh, you definitely can name your kid queen and king here. And princess. I knew a yeah. princess king in yeah. high school. Yeah. Maybe it's a commonwealth country. Maybe. They're like, you are not a king or queen. Yeah. and Or prime minister. Yeah. Or doctor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you name your kid doctor in the U.S. Huh. Yeah, that's that's trippy. wild. Just to clarify, our baby's name is not cocaine. <laughs> cocaine Casey. <laughs> Just in case anyone was thinking that. that sounds kind of fun. So anyway, um, let's talk about maternity and paternity leave. Okay. Everything is getting so real, right? We are spending every extra moment we have getting the house ready which who knew nesting Nesting is a real thing that was also shocking i thought that was just like oh just like you know the internet loves to make women seem like all they care about is like nesting and being moms and it's like no apparently like your hormones evolutionarily like your your body goes into nesting mode preparing like a safe space for your child yeah i was talking to my dad about that this morning i'm like is what we're doing nesting like we're rearranging rooms. We're, we're clearing things yeah, out. Yeah, I guess that's nesting. I, I, I think so. Because yeah. how, yesterday I rearranged the linen closet. Well, that closet well, was been, nasty. I haven't done that in three years since we moved in. Okay. That's got to be nesting. What <laughs> else would motivate me to do that when I have no motivation to do anything right now? Well, we're just cleaning out space. We have another human that's being nesting. coming into our lives. and it's, Yeah. Because I was like, we're not nesting. I just, my office needs to become the nursery and the spare bedroom needs to become my office and your office needs to become this room. And I'm nesting. I'm nesting. I feel like I'm just being practical. Okay. You're presting. <laughs> you're practically nesting. Practically nesting. Anyway, I want to talk about paternity and maternity leave because now that everything is coming up so quick and we're, we are six weeks away, um, I'm getting this question a lot and I'm not prepared it's taken me by surprise. The question is like, so what are you going to do about maternity leave and what is Sean going to do? Or like the question, the question is, is, is usually presented like, like inferring that you'll take a few days and then I'll handle the rest. <laughs> the question is like, what's Sean going to do? And I'm like, well, our plan is however long Sean gets to have paternity leave is how long I'm going to have maternity leave because there will not be a day that, the two don't overlap. If your paternity leave ends after New Year's, then that's when we will get childcare and I will go back to work. I am not, the, the reason I wanted to bring this up because it's just so weird that we just assume that the mom will figure it out. The mom will put her career on hold. The dad will be not given paternity leave and have to go back after like a week because that, that probably is the reality is that paternity leave is a privilege you know, depending on where you work, like it's not automatically assumed that you get paternity leave. Mm -hmm. So it is just so assumed the mom will just, her career will wait and she will handle things on her own. And, and so many women do have to do it all on their own when the, when the dad goes back to work. So it just really gets me like, it gets me fired up because I'm like the thought of doing this a single day without your help in the first eight weeks, it's terrifying. I don't want to do it. <laughs> You're afraid to speak. I don't know what to say. I agree with you. Yeah, this isn't attacking you. Yeah. Just, do, you, do you feel attacked? I feel the look that you were giving me is a little... Oh, sorry. It's, this isn't directed at I you. I just... You're in the room across from me. <laughs> it's just it's just crazy Yeah. that like it's just, well, what are you going to do when Sean goes back to work? Well, I'm going to get a nanny or I'm going to mm -hmm. go to daycare. Like I'm not just going to all of a sudden be a stay-at-home mom because Sean's paternity leave ends. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with it. If you want to be a stay-at-home mom, that's amazing. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think that's completely fine. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty lucky that I work for a small company and, and there's a pretty flexible schedule there. And so, I mean, it also is a kind of a fortuitous time that we're having the baby that it falls in November and December. So you already have Thanksgiving yeah. and Christmas as two major holidays. Yeah. Um, so I think it's great that I, my company offers this. Um, and I, you know, my boss was like, take whatever you need, you know, like we're here for you. Um, and I really appreciate that approach. And I have friends who work for some larger companies like uh, Adobe and Google, and they, you know, they give their employees like a long time as well. And that's insane, isn't it? So someone, one of our friends who works for Adobe, how many, how many, he got like months. I think Terrence got like six months. Six months of paternity leave. Yeah. That's outstanding. Yeah. Our friend, well, our friend Carla, who works for Intuit, she got eight months that's maternity a, leave. That's amazing. Yeah. When, which is crazy because like Europe, it's so common. Like it's just such, it's like so normal in the U S it's like the dudes take a week. Mm -hmm. I think it's all, there's just like so many parts of our society that like are just rooted in like the 1960s and things haven't really changed. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I get why that fires you up that you're just expected to be that. And, you know, obviously many women are happy to be that, but that's not what you want to be. I'll just laugh though. If we fast forward like three months and you're like, I want to take more time and I just want to be with the baby. <laughs> sure. If that happens, maybe Yeah, it's just tough because like for me in my career, it's not like, Oh, if I don't make videos for a few months, someone will step in and make those videos for me. Mm -hmm. Right. No one's covering my job because, because I work for myself. And so there's a motivation there. That's like, I can't stop. Honestly, I probably will have to like, I probably will be putting up content during mm -hmm. my technical maternity leave. Mm -hmm. I'll have to figure that out. But it's like, I can't just take two months off and then hope that the algorithm is still favorable to me when I get back. Yeah. You know, it's not like I have someone who's taking over, taking on some of my responsibilities or right. filling in it's for definitely me. Definitely not a normal job. Yeah. I mean, are we just going to like live stream the birth then? Is that the <laughs> I'm like, this is for the baby's college fund. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want, I barely want you to take photos during the birth. I'm like I, I want to die. I know in the moment that I'm not, <laughs> this is kind of a tangent, but I know in the moment I'm going to be like, don't you dare photograph this. But afterward, I'm going to be like, man, I wish I had some photos because you remember when I got ACL surgery mm -hmm. and I, before we went into surgery, I was like, oh, film me. Cause I'll be, I'll come out. I'll be on drugs. You were hoping to like go viral. <laughs> hope I say something <laughs> ridiculous and I come out of surgery and I am just in so much pain. It's not the same as getting, uh, getting ACL reconstruction, reconstructive knee, whatever it's called is apparently not the same as getting your wisdom teeth out. Yeah. So I bring the camera out and I'm like, hey, and you're like, put it away. <laughs> just like sobbing. I'm like, oh, okay. You asked me to. It's just in no. so much pain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Haley Ardula offers delivery room photography. She also, as part of like the birth plan, she was like, do you want me to take photos with your phone? Yeah, maybe it's just that. And I was like, yes, waist up only, please. <laughs> so then you're in the photo. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not like focused on taking photos, but I'm going to want the record of that. Even if in the moment I'm like, I know I look crazy. I don't think I want photos of this, but I think mm -hmm. I'm, I know down the line I'm going to want photos, yeah, absolutely. which also brings me to another tangent of how, like I've been just watching all these TikToks. These women are like, once your water breaks or once you know that you're about to go into labor or you labor has started, but you're still waiting at home and you need to kill some time. Women are like, I'm going to do my hair. <laughs> so that they look good for the birth. And I'm mm. like, I didn't, I didn't think that I had to do my hair. I thought that we all collectively were just like, it's fine. You don't we, have to do your hair. We don't have to do our hair. We're about to sweat, vomit, like all the, all the bodily fluids. And I have to, I have to look cute. No, you don't. Women are like, I, they get their eyelashes done. So then they don't have to like do their mascara. I watch a woman in a hospital bed be like, my contractions are getting closer. So um, get ready with me <laughs> while I do my makeup. And she put on like some light makeup before get delivery. Ready with, get ready with me while I have my baby. Yes. It just is like setting this unrealistic expectation in my head. No, you don't need to do that. But everyone else does it. No, you'll be fine. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Back on track. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I... As far as maternity and paternity leave goes, like I, I totally understand it. And I think our system is based on like the 1950s and 60s precedent that the wife stayed home and the man went to work and, and that's how it is. And it's, it's just weird that we're half a decade later, maternity and paternity leave are still the same, yeah. same in, you know, in principle in the U.S. So, yeah, 
So for those wondering what our maternity and paternity plans are, it's when Sean goes back to work, so does Lauren. <laughs> That's the plan. You might even go back earlier. Yeah, I think I probably will. I think I'll probably, hopefully find. But not officially. No, and probably just like easy videos, not mm -hmm. some of the videos I do, like every video that goes on Facebook that has to be three minutes long. Those take me half, like a full day to edit. So it'll really just have to be like easy things that we can shoot. Mm, like vlog style stuff. Yeah. Just live streaming the baby. <sighs> That's the other thing we have to figure out is like, I, I don't know how I feel about showing the baby or not showing the baby. So there's a lot of people who have strong opinions right out the gate of like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to show my baby's face on the internet. I don't have a strong opinion. And I, I'm like trying to figure out why some moms, why some influencers choose to hide their baby and why some don't. I get children. I understand right. children, right? Where children are speaking, they're acting, they're doing things like they don't really know what they're consenting to. Yeah. And like that may come back and be embarrassing, but like as a baby, just laying there, just laying there, like a really cute outfit. That yeah. I, bought. I, I don't really understand that. And unless you're super famous and you're trying to hide your kids from sure. like the universe, I don't, I don't really sure. understand that. So I think for me, when there's a baby, like you're putting baby photos all over Facebook all the time or, yeah. you know, wherever, like you're just posting cause you want people to see your baby. It's when they're older and they're talking and can potentially say funny things that may. But even then, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the move for us will be. I don't think there is one. I don't think one is right or one is wrong. Yeah. I just can't quite figure out the motivation on both sides that can help me help us decide. Like I want to, I guess I really should ask. Like I was thinking, Ashley, I, I follow her um, from The Bachelorette or Bachelor and her son's name Dawson. She shows Dawson. He's like two. She mm -hmm. shows him all the time. Um, she's a pretty big celebrity. Um, I'd just be curious, like what, and I'm sure that she is scrutinized for it. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. So I'm sure she gets DMs all the time. And they're like, I can't believe you show your baby. So I'd just be very curious, like what, what went into your decision to, to just show him mm -hmm. all the time. Um, and not because I'm like trying to shame her or anything. I, just cause I want to know, I, you know what I'm trying to, does that make sense? Does it sound like I'm just trying to figure out like why people choose one versus the other? Uh, yeah, Cause I, I don't think, have I a strong a, opinion. Yeah, if you don't have any opinions, like, Hey, I'm, we should talk to someone who's like, I'm absolutely not showing my kid. And then yeah. talk to Ashley. I who's yeah. Sure. Kids all the time. I, I think I personally would skew towards showing my kids. Mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily feel like I have to do that, but I understand why some people would feel that way. But I think it's because like we forget like, you know, everything we do on the internet, it doesn't feel like strangers. It doesn't feel like we're posting mm -hmm. to, to strangers. And so he, I don't know, like we treat the internet like this is, these are our friends mm -hmm. and, and our family. So it feels weird to not share that information. Yeah. And like, I mean, I'm not saying, oh, okay. Once they reach talking age, then we're starting a YouTube channel for them and they can do an, un <laughs> force them to do an unboxing, which if they right. want to fine, but I'm never going to like, we're not trying to exploit right. her on right. the internet. Whatever she like wants to do, I want to support. Mm -hmm. But you got to, you got to think that if a child sees her parents being on camera, yeah. posting things on the internet, naturally, yeah. she's going to want to do that. That's going to be a hard conversation because of the whole, like, how long can you wait before you let your child get social media? Yeah. And so being on YouTube, doesn't that count as social media? If the child is like, I would like to start a YouTube channel and she's like eight and you're like, well, I said no social media till you were 25, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. What a, what a line to tiptoe. I don't think it's good. I don't, well, maybe there's just all these processes put in place for these child YouTube stars that are like, they're not allowed to read comments. Yeah. You know, cause it's that. Like go in the room, have fun and then leave. Yeah. And then yep. Yeah. Cause like I shouldn't be allowed to read comments. <laughs> right. Yeah. We have a lot to figure out. We need as we go. We need to talk to like some people, internet people. Mm -hmm. I want to be friends with dude, dad. And what's his wife's name? Heidi. Heidi. We should get them. We should get them. Yeah. Dude, dad, Heidi. Hey, everybody tag dude, dad and Heidi. And uh, <laughs> let's see if we can get them on our podcast. I know they're in Colorado. Yeah. So we have to figure out how to, you know, get people to call in <laughs> or whatever you do. <laughs> Is this 1990? What do you do? Uh, you know, zoom in? I don't know. Video in? We should be like, hey, come to San Diego. Cool. Come to San Diego. They have four children. They have like a newborn. We'll come to Colorado. I am about to give birth. I will fly to Colorado. <laughs> Lauren will jump on Zoom and Great. we'll do a call. Oh, uh, anyway. Yeah, who, who are the people we want to talk to? Do Dad and Heidi. Yeah. The Holderness. Holderness family. Yeah. Their kids are older, so I feel like that was easier for them to like give their consent. Yeah. Still um, though, I mean, their kids are part of it. Yeah. 
Lisa Schwartz. I know she's not showing her baby. And she, Lisa Bug. I know who, yeah, she just posted a photo with. But was the baby's head turned? Yeah, I so don't people know, do it. Do they do it very discreetly, where you mm. don't necessarily realize nobody. You know, they're not putting like an emoji necessarily on their face, but they're just showing you the back of the head, yeah. or they're in a baby carrier, so you don't, you just don't see the face. Speaking of like traditions surrounding giving birth, uh, you're getting this question a lot, and yep. that is like, how involved do you plan to be during my birth? Yeah, like the child. Is it birth. my birth? The birth. You're. I'm giving birth, You're but giving it, birth. I've already been born, so I don't think it's my birth. <laughs> How involved do you want to be during baby girl's birth? Like the birth? birthing process, right? And like, we're yeah. not saying like, are you going to be in the room or not? Yeah. You know, there are like, are you going to be down there t- as the catcher of the baby? Right. And one of the things that came up is like cutting the umbilical cord. And everyone's like, oh, you got to do it. Like tradition, that's what dads do. They cut the umbilical cord. And I just, I, I'm like, I'll do it if you need me to, but <laughs> like, <need> a hand. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't necessarily feel this need to do it. Um, and it's not like a, it grosses me out sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Like I can cut it. I've cut meat before, you know, like it's, it's, that's what it is. You know, it's like, all right, cutting some chicken. Like it's Ew. the same. <laughs> so it's not that, but I'm just like, I don't feel this need to do it or like catch the baby. I'm like, just give it to me once it's all cleaned off. I don't <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're such a diva. You're a dad diva. I just, I don't know. I, the, the, I understand not wanting to catch it. That's a lot. I'm like, are you sure doctor? Like yeah. that might be something you want to handle. The yeah. umbilical cord, that thing, I'm pretty sure they dumb proof it or they're literally like snip here. They make it very easy. And if you're not squeamish, I just would love, I, I want to get to the bottom of like, why you don't want to do it if you are indifferent towards it. Uh, I think this goes back to like our wedding day, right? We're like, all right, what's this tradition? Does it mean anything to me? Yes, no. Then let's, I'm just like, it, it's like symbolic, I guess. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. It doesn't do you, matter to me. But if maybe you're looking at it from the wrong way and maybe like it should matter because your involvement in it, it's like as close as you can get to being a part of the birth. I am physically mm-hmm. involved my body is taking on a toll you come out hands clean like, I'm, I'm the hero that like rescues you from the baby no, that's, and not, that's not what i'm saying i'm saying maybe cutting the umbilical cord is supposed to be your like chance to get your hands messy and like like to be physically involved in the labor in the birth yes I, I mean if you want me to I, I think, I mean, I don't know. I don't I don't know the whole history of this, but it's just like the dad comes in and cuts the umbilical cord and then he goes back and smokes his cigarettes and drinks whiskey. You know, like I, <laughs> I just. So great. you're turned off by it because of the kind of like tradition for tradition's sake aspect of it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just like, what, what, why, what's the purpose? Like what? And I haven't had a good, you know, like explanation, the skin to skin thing. I've seen a million times. Like, yes, of course I want the baby on my skin. I want, I want to do anything that's been like proven to help, but Mm -hmm. cutting the umbilical cord has no scientific value. It has no, like, I haven't had a good explanation other than, oh, you're involved in the birth process, which Mm -hmm. I get, but I'm just like, I'd rather just have the baby in my arms. Like Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't need to do that. Okay. But I will. I, I I absolutely will. I don't think you should have to do anything that you don't want to do. What if we I were don't... what if we were just like really, really earthy and like you have to bite the umbilical Ew. cord? <sighs> then you'd be interested? I mean, hey, if, if that's what we're doing, okay, fine. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we're just like in this like sterile operating room and they're like And they give you the child scissors. I've also I've also <laughs> they <laughs> yeah. don't even trust you with the real ones. No, but I I've also heard like they will cut the umbilical cord. <gasps> And then they give you a piece and they hold it and then you just cut that. So it's like, it's like it's cutting like the cut. Ri- yes. It's like cutting the ribbon of a like, you know, new building or something like that. So, oh, it's, like, so it's not even the yeah, part that I've heard of that happening. So I'm, I'm it's also, like, I've got questions about how long this umbilical cord is. <laughs> it's like the way you make it sound, it's like, it's still attached to me, right? It's still in me. And then the baby is just on this long phone cord <laughs> <laughs> and dad's up here like, oh, okay, hand, hand me the phone. And then you just cut it. Yeah. See, I'm just like, just let's just have the baby. Okay. Let's just g- give me the baby. That's <laughs> give what I it want. to me when it's clean. Yeah. Give me the baby. I, okay. I don't know. Like I said, I'll do it. Maybe, maybe I'll change. Our buddy Brack, I was like, I don't care. He's like, you will care. And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like, Why would I change my view? Okay. Uh, well, maybe some 
one will comment and give us some yeah. perspective I on would, like I would love some why. perspective on it. Yeah. Cuz I just don't I yeah. don't have that inclination. That's okay. Okay, speaking of maybe like pregnancy related practices that don't make a lot of sense, but we do them anyway. I have officially entered the week that I'm supposed to do all of these, like eat and drink all of these things that are supposed to help with birth. Have you heard of any of these? You haven't said any of them yet. <laughs> I know, but like, have you heard about this? Oh yeah. <laughs> have you heard of any of these things that I haven't said? Um, yes, I have heard that there are some things that you can do to like ease the birthing process to soften the, yeah. what are we softening? Guess not stool. I've had some whiskey. <laughs> Guess what do you think it is for softening? Come on, <laughs> describe it. I know this. <laughs> Are you just forgetting the term? Yes, is that the part of the body. Yeah, <laughs> just down there, you know. <laughs> the cervix. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, we're softening the cervix. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So there's and like we're making sure the perineum doesn't rip. Oh God. <laughs> That one we haven't started because I don't understand that one. It doesn't sound fun. But we're doing, I've started the dates. So one of the things is like you eat dates every day. Uh, and Six it, of them, right? So, yeah, something like that. And then it's supposed to help soften the cervix. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, recipes to help make that easier. And I'm like, I freaking love dates. Bacon wrap dates, love them. Regular dates, it's pure sugar. What's not to yeah. love? <laughs> It's like just eating candy. It's like eating candy. Yeah. I'm like, this is the easiest pregnancy thing I have had to do is stuff my face full of dates. So what's your date schedule? You just crush two in the morning, two at lunch, two no, at dinner? six at once. Six right away. Yeah. <laughs> Spike your blood sugar. <laughs> I didn't really think about spacing them out. <laughs> Should I? Uh-oh. I mean, like People I, like blend them up and put them into a smoothie, yeah. put them in oatmeal. You're like, why? I just love just them. Just eat them. Nom, 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 nom. Okay. And then I guess I'm supposed to start raspberry leaf tea, which all of these, none of them are like truly proven. Our doula did say that like there was data. Around the dates, right? On the dates, but, but everything else didn't really have any mm -hmm. scientific, 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 mm -hmm. yep. You didn't know what cervix was five seconds ago. <laughs> uh, but I'm willing to do anything that doesn't cause harm mm -hmm. and is no sweat off my back. I think also like Haley was like, if it makes you happy, or brings yeah. you joy, then yeah. do it, you know, and hey, it can't hurt. It's not going to hurt you by doing it. Yeah. And it might work, it might not, but but if it feels like a hassle or a you're chore. Like, you're like, man, I hate dates or I'm getting diarrhea by <laughs> eating yeah. all these dates. Yeah. yeah, then don't eat dates. Yeah. It's fine. Okay, I don't have a segue for this next thing, but um in sync it was all over in the news last week yeah. because they were at the VMAs and Justin Timberlake like reunited with them uh for like the first time. So They've been doing a lot of press tours. One of the things they did was they were on Hot Ones, you know, the yeah. the wing, mm -hmm. hot wing eating show. And I thought this was fascinating. So you know how Justin Timberlake is known <clears throat> for uh, every May 1st, yeah. the meme it's comes gonna up. Be yeah, it's going to be my. Yeah, the song, it's going to be me. He's famous for having said it's going to be May. Yeah. That's how he pronounces it. So on Hot Ones, he talks about why he pronounced it that way and it's really interesting he was given that note so max martin it you know who max martin is he's yeah, one of the like the swedish he's the swedish music producer who's yep. basically touched like every number one hit of the past 30 years yeah um in this was kind of like a lost in translation moment when they wrote the song he wanted it to, to it, the pronunciation needed to be may i think to probably to rhyme with the aforementioned line or the with the previous line mm-hmm and so he was like, can you say, I need you to sing it like May. It's going to be May. He may. Yeah. And so he did. He was like, okay, that's weird. But he did it. And then it became this like infamous thing. You can tell he's like, I don't know. I think he kind of hates himself yeah. for it. Unrelated. I saw this as like it's some TikTok trend. It's like, what's one word you've mispronounced that like embarrassed you? And then they it's cut. like haunted you your whole life. Yeah. And they cut to Justin Timberlake and he's like, me. Yeah. <laughs> And like, I he just looked thought, so dejected. I thought it was funny at the time. And then I had, I didn't know that they had, I guess it's just, they're everywhere just right now. It, yeah. Mm. Are they about to launch a tour? And if they are, are we going? And the answer is yes. But how much are we willing to spend? And the answer is. There is no limit. No, I don't want to spend as much as I did on Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is like 
different. All right. So, so are we establishing rules that what we spent for Taylor Swift is the cap of anything that we're willing to do for music? We will do that for Taylor Swift only. Okay. I would do it again for Taylor. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of people that caused a controversy during the Super Bowl. Oddly specific here. Justin Timberlake. Yeah. 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 Um, Taylor Swift is all over. So everyone's been talking about this. Travis, what's his name? Kelsey. Tra- Travis Kelsey on the Chiefs. Yep. Whatever. Like he, during her. <laughs> Why don't you want her to be happy? Because everyone benefits from this more than her. That's why I'm just like, mm, she should just date whoever, whatever. She should do whatever she wants How to do. How do you know that he's not the one that she wants to date? I'm just saying everyone's stock is rising for being associated. Like, let me, so basically whatever tour, maybe it was Kansas City she came to for the Eras tour and Travis was trying to get get his number to her right. and it didn't work out, whatever. And somehow that information went public and like went viral. Everybody talking about how Taylor or Travis basically like got rebuffed from Taylor or couldn't get his phone number, his message to Taylor. And so since then there just like have been rumors that like they are dating and, or maybe the rumors are that they're not. And then we were watching football last Sunday and all of a sudden like the NFL announcers are all getting in on it. Like when they talk about Taylor Swift dropping Taylor lyrics when they're talking about Travis and it's it's been well known that like the NFL has asked Taylor Swift to perform at the Super Bowl several years in a row they definitely asked this year and she just keeps turning it down and right now is not the right time for her even more so than years past because she's doing like this mega world tour so you think this is a conspiracy theory to get taylor swift to perform at the super bowl I'm just halftime saying, no i don't think it's conspiracy theory but i think everyone is like oh i think the nfl is capitalizing on tra- i think the travis thing is is natural i'm sure i'm sure all sorts of athletes are trying to get in trying to get their number to taylor swift who wouldn't want to date a six foot tall mega star <laughs> like she's gorgeous she's so talented so i'm not saying I'm not saying this about Travis, but I'm saying the NFL is like, I just feel like they are jumping on this bandwagon because they're like, oh, Taylor Swift saved the economy. She <laughs> she made every city's economy grow when she visited during her concert. Yeah, let's get, we need her at the Super Bowl, you know. So basically today she was in a box, VIP box with, with Travis's mom, right? Yeah, yep. And the NFL and like every, like they're just capitalizing on this. And I'm just like, everyone benefits from Taylor making an appearance at a game, dating an NFL person, like everyone's stock rises. But, but I'm like, she wouldn't do anything she didn't want to do. Yeah. And oh, this, this poor woman is being thrust into the spotlight. No, it's just people like benefiting and making money off of her. I, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but the NFL is like the most profitable league in the world. Yeah. But that's how greedy and money hungry all this they are. <laughs> I think the NFL is opportunistic. Sure, this is great. I don't think they need Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey to be dating to be successful. And I don't think Travis Kelsey needs Taylor Swift to be, but it helps them. Obviously, I don't but, think Travis yeah. is, you know, I'm not saying him. I'm saying more the NFL is nefarious. They're just like, yeah, here's something that's going to bring attention to mm-hmm. our league. Okay. Oh, man. So do you ship ship them? <laughs> did, did I say that right? Sure. Yeah, um, okay. I don't really care i i think she doesn't care i just don't have i don't know anything about him he's good looking uh, yeah i don't know his dating history i don't know if he's good to women <laughs> like everyone else who's not in your shoes who loves football is like oh my god taylor swift is dating travis chelsea so like yeah. you have a whole portion of the country I'm sure kansas city chief <laughs> chiefs fans or yeah you have a whole portion of the country who's having that r- response he's pretty funny he's he's really cool oh okay this is totally random but this came up on tiktok and i thought this was a really good it's like a like a relationship question okay if someone told you they saw me arguing with someone on the street what would you immediately assume i was arguing about actually this is not random at all this is pretty relevant (laughs) to what we were just talking about taylor swiss relationship status (laughs) <laughs> okay but seriously um okay i need a little bit of context um are you angry just or, i don't know so it just are you, you discussing see me, animated I don't, whatever you think you just see me arguing what am i arguing about what would you what's the first thing you would assume i was arguing about all right the first thing that comes to mind is like beer versus seltzer 
and people are just like <laughs> seltzers are, you know, they're disgusting, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Like you're a staunch defender of seltzers. Yeah. And like, yeah. Defend it. I would defend it. I would argue with a stranger over seltzers. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the other obvious one here is that person is a Duke fan. And yeah. you guys are <laughs> talking about basketball. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But you don't, you don't like being confrontational with sports. No, not you're, at all. You're not a trash talker because uh-uh. you're like, you don't like being trash talk to yep and so you don't therefore talk trash because you don't want anyone else to talk trash to you yeah i i just feel like i'm not the one playing so when someone wants to be like oh man you guys really sucked that game or like i'm just like i didn't do it i'm just a fan (laughs) yeah so why would i be like why would i i really don't like when people trash talk to me and so i really i try not to trash talk back and that i that also comes down to like sportsmanship like i was never that person when I did play sports. Like I don't, I was never braggy. Maybe because I was never good at sports, right? <laughs> so I was never bragging. I was never cocky. I was never talking trash because I had no trash to talk. Yeah. I just was like, I hope nobody hurts me. I hope we all have fun. <laughs> you know, I just don't want to embarrass myself. I think the other thing for you is like, you really, really don't like confrontation. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't know if I would ever find you. Arg- that's <laughs> true. You, you, pr- you probably wouldn't find me arguing. Yeah. Yeah. I would chirp from far away from behind monica yeah (laughs) i would never do something confrontational that close to somebody unless i was far away do you remember the time we were out dancing in north park and that person elbowed me yeah and then i almost died we were on the dance floor in north park and i was super packed this is you know five six years ago and there's like a group of girls and there's a, a really tall girl who's like taller than you and she's like kept bumping into you for some reason and like you kind of just like pushed back one time and then she like threw an elbow. And the next thing we know, we're surrounded by like seven girls who yeah. are all just like gonna, she's gonna kill me. Yeah. So I just like grabbed you and like <laughs> got you off the got you out of there real quick. But Yeah. Scary. <laughs> all right. What do you what would you think that you would find me arguing with someone about? Probably something sports related, probably something Michigan State related. But arguing I wouldn't say that you would be arguing, I'd say you'd be having a, a like heated conversation where you would leave being best friends with that person. (laughs) You would have that person's phone number. Oh, I could see if someone said anything about your mom. Yeah. I think you would see red. Yeah, I do see red. One time when I was in high school, I was driving with my mom and someone like cut her off or I can't remember exactly like blared her horn and I leaned out the window and I threw my drink at the car. (laughs) I was so mad. Did somebody honked at your mom driving? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Very protective. I'm very protective. And of you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But then she was upset with me (laughs) that like I did that. You littered. (laughs) Driving road rage is crazy. Like I, you, you feel so safe in your car, right? If you, like if somebody cuts you off or whatever and you swear, you're not, I would never actually swear to that person, it's face. But if somebody reads my lips, I'm like. (laughs) terrified because it's just like a, a natural you never know, you you never know never, yeah. like what someone could do speaking of confrontation living spaces we have an update on the living spaces debacle so on the last episode we talked about how we had a couch that we bought at a store that was being held there till we could pick it up and there was a fire at the store and we went to the store to ask what they what they could do to replace our couch and they said nothing that we would have to pay the difference between what the price we got our couch for on sale and the brand new price. It was like $2,000 difference. And the store manager was like super rude to us. Um, So in the meantime, we were like, give us a refund. We don't want to pay more. We don't want to give you any more of our business. We'll just get a refund and we'll figure out (laughs) what to do about this situation. Uh, And then you get a call yesterday. Yeah. So there's, there's two employees and it was one that was like a younger guy and he was like, trying to work with us and then i don't know if it was his manager whoever like and she was just the one who was like absolutely not she was like verbally attacking just us immediately on the defensive yeah um offensive and so i get a call and he's like hey and it's that guy and it's that guy and he's like hey i was out for a week and i was thinking about your experience and i talked to the store manager and i told him your situation and i asked if there's anything we can do and he called corporate and we're willing to give you a new couch for the price that you paid I was just like, 
oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, you know, if, if we have one, we can give it delivered, you know, but next week um, we'll even include delivery because previously we weren't going to get delivered. We'd have to pick it up ourselves. Yeah. Um, and so we're getting a couch. So. so we're getting the couch. I don't think that, I don't think Living Space has heard the podcast. I don't think so. I think genuinely that this is like a very good human. Yeah. Who saw how that whole situation went down and it's a little validating to be like, okay, we're not crazy. Yeah. That was a really awful interaction with that woman. Right. We didn't do, I'm like, we didn't provoke that reaction from her. I think he's a genuinely good human who did not like the way we were treated mm -hmm. or didn't like kind of like the solution. Our couch is ruined. We bought it on sale, but because we got it on sale, that's our fault. So I don't think it's like, Oh, someone heard the podcast from living spaces. I think we just got really lucky with that really nice person. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for a little game. We like to call what made Lauren cry this week. That sounds spooky. The other day. So I've talked about how I'm just like, I'm just always in pain. This week I started getting headaches, which I haven't had in pregnancy. And I, you know, I was talking, we were in the kitchen and I was like, I have a headache and you suggested I take Tylenol. And that made me cry. <laughs> lesson learned. <laughs> what is the lesson? Don't suggest any solutions. Yes. No solutions. When I'm complaining. Yep. All right. What did you just find out this week? All right. I got a crazy one. Are you ready? Sure. I just found out that male giraffes will headbutt females in the bladder until they pee. They then drink the urine, tasting to determine whether the female is ovulating or not. What? Yeah. Also, why is my first thought, well, that sounds slightly easier than ovulation <laughs> strips. <laughs> yeah. That's so aggressive and sad. Yeah. Just imagine me headbutting you in your, in your bladder to make you pee and then just. And then you drink <laughs> it and then you're like ovulating. Yep. Wow. And there's actually a photo attached to it. Oh, I don't want to see it. Not the headbutting, it's, it's the male drinking the pee. Well, I don't want to see it either. I'm not sure <laughs> it's not sad. <laughs> oh, okay. It's still gross. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, weird. Like, we had a hard time determining if you were ovulating. So, you know, giraffes if you're haven't desperate, figured it out. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, what is it? What does the ovulating pee taste like that they know? <laughs> yeah. What's different? <laughs> and also, does that mean they're drinking the regular pee to be able to tell when there's a variable, when there's a variant? <sighs> I don't know. Um, okay. I just found out. That you, when you get that powdery orange residue on your fingers after eating Cheetos, yeah, that there's a name for that. The company has determined it's called Cheetle. Cheetle. So Cheeto dust that gets on your finger, the res residue is called Cheetle. <laughs> so I tried to find like the history of that, like why Cheetle? Yeah, it's Cheeto dust that would be like chest, <laughs> or like Cheeto powder would be like chowder. Chowder. Why Cheetle? I don't know, but it oddly fits. Okay, so you guys leave us a lot of amazing comments that give us food for thought, things that uh, we decide we should talk about, ideas, topics, suggestions, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of your comments are responses to the previous week's podcast. Um, so I pulled some good ones. Okay, can't wait. Last week, you remember I talked about how when... I stood on the non-traditional side during our wedding. Mm -hmm. And the reason that men are traditionally supposed to stand on the right during the wedding is rooted in this idea that brides could get kidnapped at any time back in yep. the day. And so they needed to be on the side that was like easier for them to pull their sword and defend the bride. Okay. So Aubrey says, speaking of kidnapping brides, I learned that the original reason behind having bridesmaids was to have other women dressed similar to the bride surrounding her, which was meant to confuse the kidnappers. What? What is with all this kidnapping? And like, what society is this happening? Like, I, what? I feel like we need to see a documentary on this or something. This is deep. wild. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Who knew it was so dangerous for a bride? <laughs> And then also like, man, oh, I'm going to be a bridesmaid. It's like bridesmaids think they have it hard today. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine being asked to dress like a decoy bride. Yeah, you're like a body double. To like, yeah, in yeah. case you get kidnapped yeah. so they don't kidnap the right bride. Like bridesmaids duties have really gone too far. <laughs> that's that's wild. Okay. Last week. So we talked about this, uh, the idea our doula said that 
uh, you, the, that dad needs, needs to play to, golf, needs to have some time. Uh, Emily says, my husband and I agree that Sean won't want to go out. He'll want to sleep for an hour instead of going out and doing something. Okay. That's a good point too. It's like, Oh, if you have an sure. hour, you probably just want to sleep. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Steph says, for mispronouncing words, when I was in second grade, one of my classmates was reading aloud and pronounced, come on, C apostrophe mm-hmm. M-O-N, as Simon, <laughs> which is Simon. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still not over to this day and I'm 28 years old. <laughs> Isn't it weird the things that like never go away, yeah. that just like stick with you? Yeah. So we were um, reading a play in like third grade or something and- there was this one part that everyone was supposed to say out loud, but I thought it was my line, only my line. But, and so it was, um, so I said it, but I said it wrong and it was, it was amen, but I thought it said ahem, like, (laughs) like clearing your throat. And so I said, ahem. And then everyone said at the same time, amen. And nobody knew that I just didn't read amen correctly. Well, no, I, I said my line before everyone else did. I didn't know we were all saying it together and I didn't know it said amen, but everybody thought I was just clearing my throat. <laughs> I guess that's a good way to fail. Just always say, ahem. 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 yeah. Ahem. Nicole says growing up, my parents called Parmesan cheese, stinky feet cheese. I didn't question it. When I was 16, I went out for dinner with friends and I asked the server for a side of stinky feet cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You gotta be careful. We have, uh, we're going to have to be so careful. What we tell our daughter. 16 years old. Didn't Still. know. <laughs> <laughs> Parmesan. Okay, you know how we talked about how when you text the shorthand for never mind. Oh yeah, NVM. And I always thought shorthand for never mind was NM. Yeah. Apparently I'm wrong. Yeah. Savor this moment. I knew you were wrong already. <laughs> like everyone is like, even in like AOL speak, NF, NVM is never mind. Yeah. NM is not much. Yeah, right. Not much. How about you? Yeah. H- HBU. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Anyway. What's it like being wrong? It's a unique feeling. If <laughs> So Emily says, my dad told my brother that horses eat people when I was a kid. The brother accepted that as a fact and didn't find out the truth till high school. <laughs> Michaela says, my dad told me sauerkraut was turtle. <laughs> what? Sauerkraut was made of turtle. I hate sauerkraut. Why? What's- I don't know. Maybe he didn't want that stinky stuff in his house. Oh, yeah. I was like, what's going to make her not want to eat this? Sauerkraut's made of turtle. The lies you tell your kids just to like. She still doesn't eat it. (laughs) Um, CJ says, I know this isn't correct, but it's a name suggestion. It's an Irish name suggestion. Pronounced Kaylee, but spelled C-E-I-L-I-D-H, naturally. Uh, It means party. Oh, that's kind of fun. Kaylee Casey. Kaylee Casey. Party Casey. Party Casey. Mm. We already have a friend. Named Party Bartley. <laughs> Party Barfley. Also known as Party Barfley. <laughs> Carly wants to know, are birth classes required or just suggested? Did you get to interview? Okay. First of all, no, birth classes are not required. Our hospital had suggested a few free ones for us that were virtual, but we didn't want to. That sounded boring. Uh, they're not required, but I feel like if the resources are available, they are just helpful. Yes. Because, like, there's so much you're supposed to just know. Right. They should be required. Yeah. And did you get to interview a few doulas to see who was a good fit or was it mostly assigned by the company? So the company that we use is really small. Like, they only have, like, four doulas. And thankfully, the owner, the one who, like, wrote everything on the website that we fell in love with and loved her vibe, she was the one that was available to be our doula. Yep. So um, we got lucky there. But we did interview her before we decided yeah, to go and I think her. we were like, also, we interviewed her and we were interviewing the company. So it's like, all right, the people that she's hiring, we would yeah. feel comfortable with. Right. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Because she she runs the company. Yeah. If we trust her, then we trust the people her she's hiring. hiring decisions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, Kyle says, wait until you buy more baby clothes. I have two boys and one girl and they mark up baby girls clothes so much. It's pink tax. <sighs> Some bullshit. I've been buying a lot of baby onesies. They're like $30 each. And they're so small and they can't wear them very long. It's outrageous. Why? I didn't set the price. <laughs> no, like, why are you buying so many? And why? Don't worry about it. Next question. <laughs> um. Okay. Last week we talked about that massage debacle mm-hmm. where I paid for a 50 minute when massage. When does the clock start? When does the clock really start? I paid for a 50 minute massage and got like a 40 minute. 
if that massage. Tamara says, I'm an esthetician. Timing starts when hands are on face. Jessica says, I'm a massage therapist. I start the timer when hands touch the client. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe this week we'll get a call from your massage <laughs> parlor and be like. Write that wrong too. Yeah. 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 All right. So I had a follow-up from last week about Midwestern speak. Mm -hmm. um, there was one thing that we didn't get to talk about, and this was, I'm sure you've seen this meme. It was like, speak Midwestern 101. So, no, yeah. What does that mean? Uh, no, yeah. No, I think, yeah. I think that means, yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, no. That means no. Okay. Yeah, no, for sure. That means yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, yeah. That means no. I'm sorry, but unfortunately, the answer is yes. Oh, you, I'm sorry, but unfortunately the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, I'm sorry that I'm answering yes. Okay. All right. And no. Yeah. No. No. Oh, no. You've got nothing to worry about. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It's fine. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So there's, there's all these things. So I was looking at this and I was like, oh, yeah, I definitely identify that as a Midwesterner. I didn't know that. But then when I was looking this up, I looked up that meme and... They've just like rebranded. So California has also like has this meme um, and New York also has this meme and Canada also so has this meme. So I think meme. humans just. <laughs> so I think it's, it's just, just human humans. Thing. Yeah. So I, unfortunately, I don't think it's a Midwestern. Also, Texas had one yeah. and it's, it's all the same. And like there's just comments of hundreds of people being like, this is me. This is us. I'm like, oh, is it just humans who say yeah, that? Yeah, that makes sense. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, what do we have for our capositives of the week? This is a section of the podcast where we don't talk shit about anything that happened and we only talk about good things that we wanted to recommend. Uh, so I actually got the question from Amanda. She wanted to know what press-on nails I use and I can't believe I haven't mentioned this as a compositive because I talk about these a lot on my Instagram. I'm obsessed with press-on nails. I have been using them. They have gotten so good. I've been using them since the pandemic because for obvious reasons, wasn't able to go get my nails done. Press on nails have come so far. There are two brands that I use religiously because I don't have to use any glue. They're just stick on. And the brands are uh, Impress. So it's Kiss, but then the it's like Impress and they're called Magic Press on Nails. And then another one is um, Dashing Diva. And I kind of just go back and forth between whoever has the best colors and patterns and designs that I want but I'm a big fan. If you want to know the best ways to uh, keep them, get them to last longer, let me know and I'll maybe make a <laughs> longer segment about this. How much would you guess you've spent Ooh. on nails so far in 2023? Just 2023? Oh, have you not spent that much this year? No, I was just thinking like over the course of my entire, yeah. um, let's say each pack is maybe eight to $10. Let's just say 10 for the sake of math. Mm -hmm. Probably $200. Like I, Maybe more. Oh. I was going through like a pack a week, but I can get like two wares out of each pack because of the sizing. I feel like we have $200 worth of nails in our bathroom right now that have not been worn. Okay. So like 400. <laughs> <laughs> and, and guess how much a manicure is every month? $50. No. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. We should, we should check our credit card statement we not. and see what, what the actual number is. Okay. You can, <laughs> that can be your research project. So that actually leads me perfectly into my positive. Okay. Um, it's a software piece of software called Monarch Money. Uh, and if you've heard of Mint, um, it's kind of like the new better version of Mint, um, but it just really helps. We can connect our bank accounts. We can connect our credit cards, any investments we have, and you can kind of just see all your finances in one place. Hmm. Um, Is that what we do? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> But what, like when we say, oh, how much did we spend at Dashing Diva? Bam, I can go in, like you mm -hmm. can search everything. You can like, it's, it's, you can add tags. Um, it's really, really easy to use and you can set goals. You can do all sorts of things there. And it's relatively, so it's, like it's like a budget app, a budget yeah, organization. It's a finance, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, you, you can log into all your different, you know, if you have credit cards, bank accounts, all of those things are all in different places. This is one central hub that connects to all of them and brings that information into your dashboard for you. So then you can set budgets by spending. For some reason, it always tells me that I go over my coffee budget 
even though like, it's hilarious we make all our coffee at home. yeah i mean maybe that's why so if when we do go to starbucks it's like oh you spent more yeah, than you did last yeah exactly so tech in september we're way over because yeah. of the pumpkin spice lattes yeah. yeah but yeah like you can so it looks at your spending and then it like comes up with a budget of what it thinks it you know this hmm. is what you're spending um and then you can also like manually override it but yeah it's it's really it's a good helpful tool and I've been using it for a year or two now and Monarch money. Well, I am certainly glad that you do that for us. That sounds great. <laughs> cool. I love when your eyes just sort of like glaze over. I'm tired. Uh-huh. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. If you have comments, topics, suggestions, questions for us, you can leave it on Spotify or in the YouTube comment section and also on the Kapower Hour Instagram or wherever you find the capability of getting a message to us, Carrier Pigeon. Um, no more bot. I killed it. Ooh, the bots. The bot didn't work out. Yeah, but you can still. What's mess. that about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we are. Kapow. Kapow.